I love you too. Y'all ready? Yeah. Hey, let's welcome out Rob Benedict and Richard Smith Jr. <laughs> Their music is real. Yeah. Keep your eye on these kids. They're gonna yeah. do well. It's it has a good swing. It's to got it. a thing. It's yeah. got a like it's a boppy kind of yeah. thing. You drive in, you're like, you start to turn it off, like you know what? No, I'll keep it on. I like this cassette. <laughs> I'm glad I bought this cassingle. Yep. Remember the cassingle, Bobo? Dude, I had a lot of cassingles yeah, back in the too. day. I had a lot of cassingles until they broke. <laughs> or got all coarse. <laughs> they wouldn't. Re Kawine. Yeah. Same. They're really cook crap, is what the single is. Yeah. It's good crap. Yeah. We they're, were sold a bill of cook goods. Yeah. They're big. We fell for it hook, line, and kasinker. Yeah, they're a big co waste of co money. <laughs> sure, sure was, Robbie. Sure was. Those are the good old days. Good times, Robbie. Salad days. The old single days. <laughs> Goddamn, good days. Remember the Chris Sandwich? Yeah. Did that you, was cool. Did you ever eat a sandwich while listening to a single? Hell yeah. You know what the weird thing about the sandwich is? Huh. It's just a sandwich. 
Yeah, I mean, it's still bread. You don't call a sourdough a bread sandwich sarich. That's true. Or pumpernitch. But you don't normally look at a croissant and think, I'm going to put some meat in this. You Let me tell you something, kid. I don't say anything that I don't think I'm going to put some meat in. All right. In the business, we call that a setup and a slam dunk. <laughs> ah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody said Mike on laugh. A, a delayed laugh. He's <laughs> still working on his comic timing. Um, then again, so are we, Robbie. The thing is, the sandwich. Oh, jeez. <laughs> still on the sandwich. Well, I just want to get to the bottom of this whole thing. So because... how was the Supernatural convention? It was okay. <laughs> but I learned a lot about... Chris sandwiches. <laughs> the single and the Chris sandwich. A lot of people wonder, do you and Rob plan what you're going to talk about when you come out on stage? I hope that this is proof that we do not. <laughs> I think if you think we spent several days before this convention coming up with a rock solid Chris sandwich bit, my friends, you are mistaken. You have misjudged what we do with our spare time. Oh, this is weird. I'm completely this is off it. script. This is, this is off script because there ain't no script. There's never was a script. Never was a script. Yep. Scriptless. We're flying solo. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not really, we're not, I mean, we're two of us. We're flying duo. That's true. See, if that were a script, <laughs> that would have been a little smoother. We were to solve that <laughs> in the rewrite. <laughs> But we didn't because there's no script. But anyway, back to the casino. Okay, so but, but I'm gonna go pre. I'm gonna go back to the casino to the thing that led me to the casino, which is the quintet ah. known as Pearl Jam. Yes. Which, by the way, if you've never had a casino, there's a little Pearl Jam spread across it. Wow, so good. And by the way, they're being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this weekend. That's cr awesome. Yeah. I hope they play one of their hits from one of those casingles I have. Yeah. They played their hit for sandwich. For sandwich flow. I hope they play it like my casingle, which would be even for. That's what your casingle sounded like? It's warped. Here's my question. Why is he chasing butterflies? I've never really paid attention to was the Was this lyrics. what this was all leading I to? I don't understand the song. I, honestly, I thought this was all going to lead to, and where are they from, Robert? No, and I know they're in Seattle. They're local. Okay, they're, and Bobby, where, where's Pearl Jam from? Seattle. Oh, that's cool. This whole thing was adding to you asking me what he was I chasing know, okay, butterflies. Listen, I was gonna he's get, crazy. I was going to get to the fact because that they're local crazy. boys. Because he's chasing butterflies. He's Who crazy. is you now? No, the guy in Evenflow, the lead character in Evenflow. He is? Here, what here, happened here. to him? Hey, you're just Wait a minute! No, no, no! Because I know the song. It's a, it's a toe tapper. It's a ditty. Okay. But I don't. I've never. I'm not a lyric guy. Okay. I'm not in a band. I don't front an ensemble. I'm not part of L.A. Like Cindy. Like Cindy. <laughs> L.A. Cindy. It's like as a homeless dude. Better? Yes. Motherfuckers got millions. <laughs> so I think better. The guy. The dude. The... Okay. We're now talking about the character in the song. Is it me? It's not me. It's right. It's. You're being a cr asshole. <laughs> you're... So now let's, let's, let's have this conversation. He wrote a song about a homeless guy. Yeah. The guy's name is Even Flo? No. Right? So is it really Evan Flo? Like the guy's name is Evan? No. Then what's Even Flo mean? What? What does the phrase Even Flo mean? Well, you know, that that's up to interpretation. Okay, now we're having a conversation. Even Flo, I, I think, uh -huh. he's, he's kind of looking for an Even Flo. is like, he's kind of looking for his sanity. He's trying to be... Even flowy. More even with his flow. Yeah. Okay. All right. The important part is All right. thoughts arrive like butterflies. Oh, that's what arrives like butterflies? Whispering hands lead him away. Whispering hands? Yeah. God damn, I could use some whispering hands in my life. <laughs> the knowing well, whispering if, hands. If you spend a little less time putting meat in your cro croissants. Hey, listen, where I put my meat is in your damn business. I have yet to have a croissant complaint. Ten minutes ago, you made it everybody's business. Yeah. It's You're the, welcome. It's the front page news. I'm just saying, so he's a crazy man. He's seeing butterflies, yeah. but he chases them away. Yep. Okay. He's seeing butterflies, he's chasing them away. Because if he didn't, he'd be covered in butterflies, and then he'd be a, an eyesore to the community. Because he'd be like, wow, a butterfly man, here he comes. Someday he'll begin his life again. Okay. When he gets that even flow. Even flow. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Someone okay. else could have a different 
Maybe it is about a butterfly catcher. Maybe he's an insectologist. Named Evan Flo. Named Evan Flo. <laughs> Dr. Evan Flo. The, the, the song is originally called Dr. Evan Flo. You know, you know what I, I've known is everybody has an Eddie Vedder imitation, by the way. He's one of those guys. Yeah, not me. You just sang. You just did a song. I wasn't imitating Yeah, you but you can't. You're like, British murder. Yeah, sure. I, mean, I, I can't. I feel like that's mocking my idol, but sure. No, this is mocking your idol. British murder. And I didn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in your face. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be out here all by yourself. You'll be a single. <laughs> and I'll be at the medical ward. <laughs> Getting cooked meat, put it on my black guy, and it comes all the way back to meat. By Dr. Evenflo. By Dr. Evenflo. By Dr. Evenflo. Who um, just needs to do a quick rectal, and then put me back on stage. A rectal? He hit me in the face! Shh. <laughs> I'm no doctor. Guy said rectal. You woke up this morning and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work rectal into my opening monologue. I don't know how. <laughs> Honey! <laughs> what rhymes with rectal? Oh, hey, kids. <laughs> Finish your oatmeal. Okay, so here we are. We're here. In Seattle, Washington. Damn right we are. We're in Seattle. Home of grunge music. Home of grunge music. Home of Jimi Hendrix. We're a place of hip rocky music. Right. And home of the Space Needle. The Space Needle. Home of the sound. Home of the Seahawks. The Seahawks. Home of the Mariners. That's right. And home to these fine supernatural fans. Except gathering for, travel. for a weekend of fun and craziness. Unless they don't live here and they drove in. I'm just saying, there's some people from other places. That's right. You know, I mean, we're not just it. welcoming the locals. This is not like, welcome locals. F you travelers. That's not what we're doing. We're not doing that. We don't operate like that. We do that in some cities. Like Minneapolis? Forget it. But here, no, you're all welcome. They do that in some countries, Richard. But not supernatural. No, no sir, we bop. We welcome everybody. We do. Open arms. We do indeed. <laughs> and sir, our, now why you, you were, I looked over, your arms are closed. I went like this. You were real, cl real fast. Uh, I felt real vulnerable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Suddenly you're fight or flight. <laughs> um, Seattle. Seattle adjacent. And people who've traveled to this region, how many of you are experiencing your very first Supernatural convention this weekend? How many of you are? Welcome. Uh, I apologize about the rectal bit. If I'd known half of you were new, I would have ramped you into this, well, kinder, I suppose, gentler. But hey, so be it. Now you know what you're in for. Now you know what you're in for. But who am I kidding? Why am I apologizing to you people, you people, you people who have an unhealthy obsession with people on television? The unbalanced masses, right? By the way, my favorite kind of masses. The unbalanced kind. The only mass I go to. You who have been following a show that started airing when you were four. And now you've watched it all. You've, you've watched it in an era in which we've invented a new way of watching things called binge watching. The unhealthy style of watching. I think in, all, in the watching world, it's the unhealthiest style of watching. In the watching world? In the watching world, in the, in the watching science community, they think of binge watching being the least healthy method of watching. The consumption of television where you block out all other stimuli, including food and work and school, and you simply consume media in grand quantities. Media led by metro, lumber, uber, sexuality. In some circles, they call that addiction. <laughs> you're damn right we do. Shut your mouth. <laughs> we call it addiction. We're right here, part of your 12-step community, but we're not here to break you the hat, but we're here to feed the beast, kids. We are your dealer. We are here to make sure that you stay hooked, and we're doing it all with the sultry soundtrack provided by Los Angeles indie sensation Loudon Swain over here to my left. Let's meet the boys in the band.
playing drums for you right now, tonight, tomorrow, and all weekend long, Mr. Stephen Norton. <laughs> On the bass guitar. You know he's a robot, but did you know he's also the most racially insensitive member of the band, ladies and gentlemen, the racist bassist, Robot Mike Borja! Fire! Yeah, little Hendrix. Nice, racist bassist. <laughs> On the guitar, a man who apologizes for nothing! If you're with your daughter, she has a crush on him. If you're with your wife, she wants you to die so she can pursue him. She loves him and all that he represents. That beard, those glasses, it should be nerdy, but it's hot. I don't understand. I don't get it. On paper, he's a dork, but on stage, he's a god! Billy Maria! Friday in Seattle, Washington, Robbie. That's how we do it. The Pacific Northwest. Yeah. <laughs> I can stand up and say do a lot of other crap and just waste time and kill time and you know milk moments. I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because contractually.